Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Shield.com. This is the award-winning In Wheel Time car <laughs> talk show. Just ahead, champion drag racer Angel Sampe All with right. news about her trip into the 2024 season. Less than a week away. You'll hear my thoughts on a week driving the Mazda 3. And Jeff has what's on automobile TV this week. Do you have that? Yeah, I got a little bit. Okay, very good. Just ahead on this episode of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us today. Well... Here she is, Angel Champagne. Looks like the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> Last time you talked to us, you know, we were all waiting and hoping for great news. And I think that we kind of got it. And the weekend is now here upon us next weekend. Yeah, it sure is. Can you guys hear me okay? We Perfect. hear you loud and clear. It's great. And it's good to see you. And thanks for joining us again today. Great. No problem. Thank you for having me. Speaking of yeah. no problem. <laughs> no problem. No problem raceway. Yep, that's right. That's where my first race will be. <clears throat> it's right here near home, about 45 minutes from my home. Uh, I'm so excited to be there. I haven't been to the racetrack. And, well, I've been to, to the track as a fan uh, probably about five years ago, but I haven't driven down that racetrack in many, many years. So I'm excited to be there. Um, we have some local sponsors that are going to be amazing for us, uh, the range Kubota and Case dealership, which is only about 15 minutes from the racetrack. The owner is my neighbor, Billy Lawson. Um, <laughs> we've, it was kind of, it's kind of a funny story I'm going to tell you. So when I built my house here, uh, there was no homes on either side of me. There's a railroad track on, on my right, and there was an empty lot on my left. And I have two acres of land. So my house is right in the middle. There's a, it's an acre, two acres deep. And... Um, so I had lived here for several years with nobody here. I ride motorcycles. I have lots and lots of animals. And when I say lots, I had lots of animals at this time. I had a pig, a goat, rabbits, ducks, chickens. You know, they, were, they were everywhere. And then all of a sudden, I uh, saw that this house started coming up right next door. And I'm thinking, oh, gosh, you know, who's going to move in there? It's going to be somebody who hates motorcycles or fast cars. <laughs> chickens. They're going to yeah. hate my animals. We're not going to get along. This is what I'm thinking. So Billy builds his home next door with his family, and he's thinking, oh, I wonder who lives in that house. I hope she <laughs> likes motorcycles. I hope she likes animals. Because come to find out, Billy is a hot rod guy. His sons rode motorcycles in the yard all day long, and his family owns the feed store that I buy all my stuff from for my animals. So we were a neighbor match made in heaven. Wow. And when, we, when he realized you know, that I race, he told me, that it would be a dream of his one day to sponsor me. And it was kind of just like, you know, fun talk. And then here we are. So Billy, with his range, Kubota, and Case dealership in Donaldsonville, Louisiana, is my major sponsor for the No Problem Race Nitro on the bay on the Bayou. And I'm so excited about it. Uh, well, congratulations. Did you name your animals? <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> Pig was Hamlet. Hamlet. <laughs> yep. I like that. And the chicken? Yeah, our goat was named Chip, Chocolate Chip, because he had brown spots all over him. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to make sure that we're on the same page the here. Chicken's because... name is Omelet. <laughs> Omelet. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So, uh, tell everybody what you're driving. I am on, I went from two wheels to four, dropped the whole motorcycle deal, all because of Antron Brown, who I know you've spoken to recently. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, what happened was, I was, um, trying to plan a way to make my exit from drag racing. And I wanted to have a couple of more races under my belt. That was all me, no team, no major sponsor, just me on a motorcycle, having fun at a few races. And then I was going to walk away with my head held high. So I called Antron and I said, who should I rent a bike from? Which team should I do? You know, I had considered owning my own motorcycle. We talked about buying my own uh, pro-site motorcycle. So I was asking Antron for advice. 
And he told me, I don't think you should race a motorcycle anymore. I think you should drive a dragster. And I'm like, I just laughed at him. I'm like, <laughs> that will never happen. So I told him I'm never going to drive a dragster. I'm not a car girl. I want to race bikes. Well, lo and behold, about five months later, now he has been telling me this for at least five years, but he really started pushing me about five months before this conversation or when this conversation happened to just try it, Angel. So he's like, I, you know, I want to help you. We're going to do this together. And um, he, one of the things he said is, why don't you want to do it? And I said, well, I'm scared. He said, scared of what? I said, I'm scared of how fast it goes. And he said, well, when's the last time you've ever seen someone fall off of a dragster? And he reminded me <laughs> that I'm doing 200 miles an hour on two wheels with no protection. So a couple months go by, and we ended up leasing uh, Jasmine Salinas's A-Fuel dragster. I got in that car, did some laps, got my, my license to, co to compete. And here we are, you know, only a half a year later, and I am teamed up with the Mahalik Brothers Racing Team, who I love. They are so amazing. I got to race with Tony Samsel as well, who I love. I found out that the people in a Field Dragster class are fun. They're amazing. They're friendly. Most of all, they're competitive. I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful class. I was just kind of felt like I was thrown into the car, and within no time I was racing, but we did really well. Um, started off the team, the race year last year with the Mahalik brothers, ended it with Tony Samsel, but ultimately this year we're going to do a full season with the ha Mahalik brothers racing. We start here at No Problem Raceway, uh, then we'll move on to the Gators, and we have a full schedule. Um, I have that posted on my website, on my Facebook page. If I don't, I'll make sure I'll do that again. But we are going to do, I think, 10 national events, and we hope to do three or four regionals. And we're going to go for a championship, so we'll see what happens. D I've got a quite going from the bikes into the car. Is it easier to get the licensing, or do you kind of bypass some of the steps, or do you have to go A to Z to no, get that I licensing? Had to do it all. I had to do it as if I had never, never ridden or drove anything before. So, you know, from the full physical to the moderate half passes, moderate passes, full passes, got to have a, you know someone sign off the license. Which, of course, I had Antron Brown. I have to think <laughs> about who else was, who else signed off on me. But uh, I think uh, Corey may have. But anyway, it was um, very nerve-wracking because I think the hardest part for me, I thought the hardest part was going to be confined in the cockpit and strapped down so tightly and covered in a oven mitt because you're covered in an oven mitt from head to toe. But actually, that became a comforting feeling for me. The, the hardest part for me was judging the car, you know, where it's at, staging it, Several times when I was learning and getting licensed, I over, you know, I went over the staging beam, and then I they had to push me backwards, and that was so humiliating and embarrassing because I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I look like such a rookie, but I'm used to being on this short wheel, but you know, a little bitty motorcycle mm -hmm. where I can see the staging beam right in front of me. I know exactly where I'm at. You know, you move the the vehicle back and forth with your feet and your hands, and it's so easy to do. You, you need to make a correction. You do it. No one even knows you did it. But this car, if you don't get it lined up right the first time, then everybody's waiting on you. And that was what I was the ner most nervous about. But got that down packed. We're good now. And I absolutely – so I went from saying I'd never drive one, have no no interest in it, to I wish I would have done this 10 years ago. Wow. And, of course, Antron says – I told you so. <laughs> yeah, of course he does. Antron is, is a special human being. He helps a lot of people. He's yes, got a he big heart. Yeah, uh, and uh, he's a good friend of this show, and we, we love to have him on just like we do you. So tell everybody, uh, this is a 270-mile-an-hour car. So mm -hmm. what what powers it? What kind of motor is it? 500 cubic inch? Oh, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just kind of figured you'd know. <laughs> I should have had Corey and Kyle on the show with me. <laughs> well, that, I have absolutely no idea well, anything about that car yet. I am learning very slowly because, first of all, I just wanted to learn how to drive it and what to do and what to expect, what to feel. Like, I had no idea what does tire shake feel like? What, what does tire spin feel like? You know, what if I uh, we drop a hole? I, I don't know what this is supposed to feel like. So that was where my main focus was at first. And now I'm starting to learn how it works. You know, they're showing me things on the car, but very slow. I mean, I, j I literally, guys, I got in the car for the first time in August. And so I, as far as the mechanics of it, 
I didn't know a whole bunch about the motorcycles. I learned over the 26 years. I learned a lot about them, but um, I know nothing about cars. So only thing I know is that we use more nitro methane than Antron does. <laughs> and the reason I don't go faster than him is because I don't have a blower. That's what I know. Ah, uh-huh. so it's naturally aspirated. There you go. That's the difference between the cars. So it's the same wheelbase. Basically, it's the same car. Yeah, yes. Actually, Tony's car that I drove in Vegas and Pomona is a top fuel dragster. It was Morgan Lucas's old car. So I got you know some good experience of what an actual car that top fuel feels like. Um, the Mahalik Brothers car is a purpose-built A-fuel dragster, so it's not far off. It's a, a little different. Um, very comfortable, beautiful car. I can't wait to get back in it. I just posted pictures on my uh, Facebook page if you guys want to see it with all the new decals on it. But I think the only difference between the two cars was a, is a little bit smaller. Um, the cockpit was a little tighter. Um, felt a little different going down the racetrack. Tony's car... I, I compared it to, I said it was a Cadillac, you know, just real smooth, I mm-hmm. guess, because it was built for 330 miles an hour. We're doing 270 in it. It just went down the track really smooth. Where Corey's car was, a, you know, Corey and Kyle's is a little different, um, felt a little bit more. I think the, I don't know if this was a setup between the two, but I remember feeling more tug on the starting line in uh, the Mahalik car that I did in Tony's, but I actually like that. That's my favorite part. When you, turn the fuel to the high side, take your foot off the clutch, put it on the dead pedal, and then you have to bump in. The way that engine kicks in, because it's, it's like it just settles down and starts to rumble real hard. Yeah. That's when it starts to go. And you're holding it back with the brake. That's the most exciting part. I absolutely love it. Because you're, like you're pumping in all of that fuel. Yeah, it, 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 it you're kind of choking it off. It, 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 hasn't yeah, got... it wants to go. Yes. My whole workout routine has changed. You know, I used to do certain exercises for the motorcycle, lots of core, you know, exercises because you really need that on a bike. Now I'm, you know, really working out my my right arm to hold the brake back. I'm working out my left leg to hold that clutch in, doing some toe raises to get that throttle pedal down. So it's it's crazy how it doesn't seem like a really athletic sport, but we all treat it as one and we do the best we can to be the best person or the best racer we can be in every way. When is the last time you've been this excited? I look when I first did my interview about you know telling everybody that this was happening. Allie, um, my publicist, I told her I feel like I've been reborn in drag racing, and that is exactly what it's like. It's like starting all over again. So if you go back to 1996 when they told me, okay, we're going to put you out at an NHRA drag race on a pro stock motorcycle, that's how I feel. Last year, I was so nervous and scared, you know, just trying to get used to the car and learn how to drive it. This year, I'm so excited because I know what to do. I know what to expect. I know how it feels. I can't wait to get in it. I can't wait to. We didn't even know. You know, we tried. We wanted to do three races last year, so we had to come up with the funding for it. But we didn't know if it was going to happen. This year, we know what's happening. I know I'm going to be out there for a whole season. I can't. There's not enough words to tell you how excited I am. Well, I'll, 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 I'm supposed to be going away. I'm supposed to be finding my exit into drag racing. And here I am starting yeah. all over. You got a glow about you, is what it looks like. Yeah, exactly. I'm excited, guys. I really am. This is totally different for me. Um, one of the things that makes this race so special that's coming up, which is why I'm so excited right now, is um, my mom and dad are going to be there, and my dad. And I hope he doesn't, I probably, I don't know how much I should say. My dad's, you know, going to be dealing with some health issues coming up. And there's a good chance that he's not going to make it to many races this year. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that he will get through what he's got to go through. And he'll be able to come out to some races towards the end of the year. But we don't know that for sure. So um, he will get to be at the No Problem Raceway. My mother has not seen me race in seven years. Wow. So this will be the first time she gets to come out to the racetrack and see me. My brother, my nephews, my father-in-law's coming. Every probably every single cousin and aunt and you know, <laughs> heck yeah, and, and neighbor and the whole state of Louisiana. I was going to say is the whole state of Louisiana is going to be there. Well, you know, I've sometimes been called Karnak the Great. Two. No, he hasn't. And, no. And, and, and so I'm thinking, you know, this is kind of a warm up to uh, top fuel under the Antron Brown yeah. flag. Uh, am, am, am I am I thinking the right way? 
Oh, absolutely. Well, he scared the heck out of me the other day and told me that he and Brian Karate had a conversation about putting me in his car for testing sometime this year. So, yay. Already planning on when that's going to happen. You know, they were discussing what they had to do to the car to get it ready for me to drive it. But, yep, that's the plan. Um, the ultimate goal is for me to race a second car for, for Antron Brown Motorsports um, and be his teammate. So, that's Very where we head. Good. But, of course, I'm not trying to or I'm trying to not get myself too excited about that because that's all going to depend on funding and you know how this year goes and if I'm ready and can I do it. So there's a lot of ifs t- for that to happen, but that is definitely our goal. Well, how about a million-dollar sponsorship to start off from the in-wheel time car talk I show? I was yeah, thinking the same thing. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Start testing immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, we are so excited yeah, for you and excited. happy for you. And just to let everybody know, um, you know, Angel's a little tiny thing. You can't tell on TV. <laughs> How tall are you? Are you five foot? I, I thought I was five one, and then I went to the doctor recently, <laughs> and for the first time, they made me take my shoes off to measure me. Yeah. And I, I, I was only five. Foot. I was I'd- like a little. Tiny, tiny bit over. Five I'd get foot. a second opinion. <laughs> yeah, second opinion. You know, the last time we talked to her, your daughter had dental surgery. I think the last time. Yeah, we talked she's to you. actually so excited right now because she's getting braces next month. Ah. I don't know what kids. Love I don't know that what either. prompted me to remember that. <laughs> yeah, she, she she's had several things done lately, but she's getting her braces on next month. So we've been dealing with that also, and I have a nine-year-old who's fortunately very healthy right now. Nothing's going on bad with either one of them they're hopefully both going to be out at the racetrack this weekend which they haven't seen me race in a couple of years so that's going to be exciting too well what's what's going on with the crawfish yeah so we got to have some crawfish i've got to have some crawdads and uh and yeah. <laughs> and some and some gumbo and you know there's crawfish right now we're getting to be right in the middle of crawfish season hoping the prices come down soon we haven't got any for home yet but usually during crawfish season we have several crawfish boils we're always looking for a reason to do it so um, if you guys want to come on down to New Orleans, it'll give us a good reason to do it. My husband's one of the best boilers there is. His, <laughs> his crawfish is my favorite. So where can we follow you next weekend uh, at No Problem Race, Raceway? What, what's the easiest way for us to follow you? So all my, my social media channels will be posting several things. My, my cousin, I mean, I'm sorry, my nephew is majoring in, I don't know the exact name of it, but he does the hype videos for LSU. He's been hired to go to the Final Four basketball game, and do, you know he does a lot of coverage for that stuff. Man. So he's going to be at the racetrack doing a lot of footage for me, photos, videos, stuff like that. Um, one of our PR girls um, will be there doing some, you know, footage and putting it all on my social media pages, so you can catch little snippets and stuff here. Then how I'm doing, but. I'm not, not sure if No Problem Raceway is going to have anything live, but they do have a website. Um, I should know it right now, but if you just Google No Problem Raceway, it'll come up. Um, and they also have social media channels. I'm sure the Range website or the Range uh, social media pages will have some stuff going on. I, so, you know, you can catch up with it there. But if I can find out any way that someone can watch everything that's happening as it's happening, I'll definitely post that on my social media pages at Angel Sampe is where my Facebook page, Twitter page, Instagram, everything is. I did want to mention really quickly, I do have some other wonderful sponsors. I don't want to forget anybody, but we have some coming back from last year. FVP, I'm so excited. They're going to be with us again. Hanks the first, you know, I love those guys. They're going to be with us again. IGTG is going to be with us this year. Um, Mission, of course, is back on board. Mm-hmm. Uh, not as big as last year, but definitely with me. And I am still the mission spokesperson for the Too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge. So I, even if I'm not competing at a drag race this year, I'll still be there working with Mission and uh, being the one at the end of the track, you know, helping hoist the trophy with the with the winner of that event. So I not only am I racing, I'm a spokesperson. And a mom and a business owner, so I don't know how I'm going to handle this year, but I'm going to do my best to do it. And you got the you got a, a whole bunch of us that are so thrilled yeah. to, to to go on this journey with you, and so happy for you, and we love you, and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I forgot one, and I won't forget it. Protech, one of our local sponsors in Houma, Louisiana, is going to be with us as well, and of course, my business. 
Champion Aquatics. We do custom saltwater aquariums, and now we build swimming pools. I don't know if I told you guys. Oh that. wow! No, I, I, I look good in a in a swimming pool made for fish. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, John Gel. Thank you so much again Thank for you. joining us, and good luck. Thank we'll- you guys for having me. You bet. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Angel Sampay. Jeff has what's on TV. I do. Uh, there's some things going on. Uh, we're talking about the uh, Motor Trend TV channel. You've got new episodes of Wheeler Dealers. You've got Graveyard Cars has new episodes. Roadkill has some new ones on there. It's a good favorite. And, of course, one I like the best would be Full Custom Garage with Ian. Uh, good show. One of the things I found out yesterday, I was looking for this. Uh, Kevin Hart's Muscle Car Crew is a show that comes on. Yeah. It was on last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to debut the new season yesterday. I couldn't find it. I could not find it. So I'm thinking it is a subscription for now going to get back onto Motor Trend. And, of course, TV tonight or today is Xfinity Racing. And then tomorrow, the Daytona 500, just to mention that again. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Time now for this hour's car review. I had a chance to drive the 2024 Mazda 3. Yeah, mm-hmm. they still make the Mazda 3. I, you know, especially Mazda. I mean, they're a major car manufacturer, Japanese, and, and uh, they have tons of models. But they still make the Model 3. Uh, they make them in these trim levels. Base, Select Sport, Preferred, Carbon Edition, Carbon Turbo and Premium Plus. I got to drive the Premium Plus sedan all-wheel drive. This is a compact car. That's what they call it. What's compact about it? I'm not sure. It uh, does seat five passengers, including the driver. Exterior changes from last model year. Well, it's part of the fourth generation Mazda 3. And this particular one was introduced in 2019. They've had some, you know, slight changes to the grill and mm-hmm. the back end and the usual stuff that you would see uh, on a fourth gen Mazda 3 that started off in 2019. Exterior features, swoopy, long hood, short deck with a laid-back windshield, very aerodynamic. Aerodynamic headlights wrap around the front fenders. Uh, Rear styling is Mazda-esque with recognizable lighting and dual exhaust. Uh, Silver or black wheels, depending on your trim level. What I liked about it, I liked the aero. I liked how fast it was, Mm -hmm. fast-looking, fast-back styling. What could use improvement? Nothing. Sharp-looking highway sedan. Interior highlights include a sleek dash with uh, infotainment screen atop the dash, not built in. You can see it there. Uh, Instrument cluster is not overcrowded with controls, easy to maneuver through. The HVAC is above the center console, basic stuff there. Infotainment controls are on the center console as well. Personally, I like touchscreens. That's my preference. Uh, Trunk room. It has a small trunk lid that limits the size of suitcases, but once it gets in there, there's room. So pack lots of small suitcases, I guess. Mm -hmm. What I liked about it, the quality of the interior is top-notch. What could use improvement? Well, as I mentioned, the infotainment uh, screen doesn't have a touchscreen function to it. It's controlled by that push knob. Too many pages to drill through to get where you want to be, uh, and too difficult overall. That is my take on the infotainment screen. But I will say this, that there are other automakers that are similar, but uh, we're talking about the Mazda 3 here. Engine, the optional 2.5-liter turbo 4, 227 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque through a six-speed automatic transmission. Here's what I liked about it. That engine, not only is it peppy and torquey, uh, 23 miles per gallon city is what it's rated, 32 on the highway for combined to 27. I got 29 miles per gallon over 362.1 miles. What I liked, the instant power, and there's plenty of it. It's matched perfectly. I will say this, those Mazda engines rock it. Uh, What could use improvement? Nothing. Great gas mileage, a bonus there. Ride and handling. Sporty ride quality. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, it can turn quick into into corners. You know, Sporty. I, think, I think that they've taken the uh, Mazda Miata, the MX-5, and kind of 
taken that knowledge over the years that they've made that car and brought it into this car. It's a fun little car. What could use improvement? It could be a little stiff for some, uh, but it hits the marks for sportiness. So there's a compromise to, you know, to play out there. And if you like a sporty little sedan, I think that this is a great one. Um, base trim price, 35450 Price is tested, 37210 Base model price, you can get in one, a stripper as we call mm-hmm. them, 24170 Now that competes well with the Honda Civic that starts at $25,050. The Kia Forte for $20,190. And the Hyundai Elantra starts at $20,950. Um, overall, I think it's a great car. I, I, I'm not a big fan of their infotainment operating system. I think that it could be better. Now, as far as the touch screen is concerned, obviously, that screen that's in this car is too far up on the dashboard. You yeah. have to really stretch to get up there. That's why they have that control knob down at the bottom. I think that it would be a good thing for them to think about changing that up. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of these infotainment screens that sit on top of the dash. There is room if you redesign the thing, and maybe in the next generation they can build it into the dash because it is part of the system, the dashboard. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, it's so, the driver. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, so don't cheat it and make it an afterthought because that's what it kind of looks like to me. But I did like it. Uh, great motor, <clears throat> and I like the sportiness of its ride and handling. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. Did, I, did, I, did, I, did I miss the spot again? I'm guessing which one you're going to do. I don't know. Okay, well, let's let's do the uh, Pro-Am, the, 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 the start one. Which uh, one? Uh, okay, it's going to be... Which one? Uh, Wait, that, that would, tell me which one it is. The Pro-Am. The Pro-Am. I'm, I'm trying to stall you so he can get there. I think he's there. I'm okay. There. All right. We're going to take a quick break here on the In-Wheel Time Car Talk Show, <laughs> and I'm going to continue to lose my mind it's okay. as the, after this. You're allowed. It's okay. Okay. Well, be a small loss. It, it would be a very small loss. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge and Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit godsgarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.